I had that on my, on my ringtone on my phone for a long time. It was the drum roll of Cymbal Crush. Because I made so many jokes that people didn't get. <laughs> say this joke and then go, <laughs> Jazz hands works as well. But um, this was originally a Scottish song, the one I'm going to sing now. And um, it was a Scottish song until 1824 when a man called Francis McPeak from Belfast liked the tune so much he stole it and he wrote new words on it and it became an Irish song. Now the Scottish don't like us when we do that kind of thing but we don't care. <laughs> the Scottish and the Irish are kind of joined at the hip, we're from the same family of the Celts. You might have heard of the Celts. They were once upon a time all over Central Europe and then, you know, the Celts had a lot in common. They were tall, good looking, beardy, handsome chaps, blue eyes and red hair and they always to hang around, you know, fighting with each other, trading with each other. So they all had their, they loved to the fight actually, the Celts loved a good fight. They'd run into battle naked, uh, off their heads on magic mushrooms or mead, uh, hacking and slaying all around them, and then at the end of the night they'd all go and have dinner together, which usually was the hearts of their victims, while well, they'd say, how many heads did you get? I got this many heads. And they'd eat the hearts and stuff. So they, they had a great time. A bit like, if you ever, a bit like an Irish wedding, I don't know if you've been there. So they do that, and uh, they like to fight, and then the Romans came along, and they liked fighting too, but the Romans were slightly better at it. They were more organised, certainly. They had more up-to-date weaponry. They had machine guns and night vision binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> and Russell Crowe. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. And uh, the Celts had fire and beer. <laughs> and Mel Gibson. <laughs> so they're no, no match for the mighty Roman Empire. So they ran away mostly and they ended up in places where the Romans didn't go. So you do have Celtic connections in places like uh, Galicia and Asturias in Spain, Brittany in the northwest of France, uh, Galicia, you know, and you have the Isle of Man, Wales, Devon and Cornwall, and then Ireland and Scotland. And Ireland and Scotland are the furthest away, and in fact, we say the Scots were the Irish that couldn't swim. <laughs> they got as far as Scotland, and, they, and English actually, the, the Romans went through England and then they got as far as the north and they said, right, you can keep it. <laughs> and Emperor Hadrian had a big wall built across England, parts of which are still there, and that was to keep the Scots out. And then they looked, the Romans looked over at Ireland and they said, we're not going somewhere where it pisses rain even more. <laughs> Ivernia, it translated, means the land of eternal winter. And the Romans were there, the state of my sandals, I am not going to Ireland, forget it. And I'm wearing a skirt. <laughs> so we never had the straight roads in Ireland, which is why Irish GPS is fantastic fiction. If you're looking for some decent holiday listening. Has anyone tried driving around with Irish GPS? Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's an adventure. <laughs> Hello? State your destination. Okay, let's go. Now, 200 yards down the road, there's a pub called O'Neill's and there's a road beside it. Don't go down that road. <laughs> So you have reached your destination. So, no, I haven't. I'm in a field, sir. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? <laughs> sure, who cares where you are? It's lovely. <laughs> anyway, let's sing this song now. <laughs> this is called The Wild Mountain Time. And it's a story about a man who goes over to work in Scotland, which is very common from the north of Ireland, particularly Donegal. It's very cold and rocky and windy and rainy, and there's no roads to go down to the south the affluent south to look for jobs. So they get in their little curricks, their little leather boats, and they row over to Scotland and do seasonal work. And this man goes over to pick the wild mountain pine of the herbs. And uh, while he's there, he falls in love with a beautiful girl. And he spends the whole song worrying about whether or not this girl is going to leave him. The refrain is, will you go, lassie go? Will you go, lassie go? Which means, are you gonna leave me? Are you gonna leave me? Which is the situation he resolves in the third verse by singing, well, if she goes away, I'll go back next year and I'll get another one of these back. I love it when I'm asked to sing this song at weddings. You can tell they haven't listened to the whole song. <laughs> it's a bit like when you're asked to sing Imagine by John Lennon at the church. Oh, yeah. Imagine there is no heaven. And the priest is like, is that? <laughs> Summertime is coming, trees are sweetly blooming, and a wild mountain time grows around the blooming heather. Will you go?
Launch a sail, father, because it's last in Yarn, which means your health, a long life, and may you die in Ireland. <laughs> That's not cool in your holidays, though. Um, you've probably you've probably seen a lot of Irish, like the Irish language, written around town on road signs and pubs and. You can sing a song in Irish now. You, you won't. You won't. Yeah. Like you won't hear too much of it spoken in Dublin, but if you go down to the, the very far west of Galway, to Connemara. It's a great that everybody speaks Irish there all day, every day. If you go down to the southwest to Dingle and Kerry, they'll all speak Irish. Not necessarily in Dingle itself, because Dingle is such a huge tourist town. Plus, but Dingle, if you go, Dingle doesn't exist anymore. It does, it re exist no, now. It's got, no, they reinvented it. Yeah, yeah. They, for a while there, they, all the people of Andanga said, we don't want to be known as an English name, so they took down all the signs that had English on them. And it was just on Dangan, and then the tourists couldn't find it anymore in the world. They're back up. Well, that, that, that caused massive attack on you. Okay, well, yeah. yeah. The, the Irish language is, is a funny thing. It's, it's very closely related to who we are and what we do, and our music, and our heritage, and our poetry, and everything else. Our politics. And, and like, for instance, I, I grew up, I went to an all Irish speaking school in Dublin, which there are there's loads of them there. They're becoming more and more popular. But in Irish, there's no, there's no word for yes and no. So if somebody says, are you having a pint? It's not just yes or no, it's I am having a pint, or no, I'm not having a pint. You know, you have to put the question back into the answer every time. And some people say, you know, if you ask an Irish person a question, you'll never, ever get a straight answer. Like, you'll never get a yes or no answer. It's always like, ah, oh, sure, geez, you might, I might have one, or, you know, you get some kind of story. If you ask a question, there's always, <laughs> it's never just yes or no. You know, if you're looking for directions, you know where this pub is, some, they're like, ah, oh, sure, you should go to that pub, you should head on down to this pub, and that brother of his has a pub now outside town, that's a lovely place to go. And, you know, it's always this kind of story, meandering story, to get to the part you want to get to, you're standing there ten minutes later going, go <laughs> first. <laughs> but, uh, it, people say that it stems from the Irish and that, the, that there is no yes or no in the language. But um, There's no swear words either. There's no actual swearing. There's cursing. You put a curse on somebody, but it's usually like God is going to get you because you're bold, or may you go to the devil because you're bold, or something. There's no actual F you or whatever. Mm, it's, it's an amazing language. Like, there's no swear words per se, but you can get away with saying things in Irish. 
that you remember, remember I sang Kunla? Mm. It was that they're not going to win the fight. There's a lot of songs like that, and they would have been originally in Irish. And if I sang that in Irish in front of my mother, who's a devout Catholic and 80 years old and you know, a bit prudish, if I sang that in Irish, because I left out a verse in the English version because it just sounds like porn. But if I sang it, <laughs> if I sang it in English, in Irish, in front of my mother, she'd say, "Oh, isn't it lovely that those two young people managed to find love so early on in their relationship?" <laughs> <laughs> it is fascinating. Like I work in television, and I work a lot for the Irish language station. And the stuff you can say on, in Irish on that station is nuts compared to what you can say, what you can get away with in English and RTE. This is only three people watching. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite true. <laughs> uh, but you can, you can say that they, they really they let anything go and they're not, they're not strict at all. They work for the BBC and you know all about it. But uh, the, one, place, the one time you will hear Irish spoken in Dublin, you will hear it occasionally, but you'll, you'll often hear people singing in Irish. There's a, an old type of singing called Shannos, which means old style Shannos. Uh, Shannos singing. If you go into, there's, there's two pubs in Dublin that would have probably a Shannos singer in. It's, it's, it's literally somebody who comes in, stands at the bar, and when there's a break in the music, that says, well, right, if, I sing, if I sing a song, and take the cap off, leave the cap on the bar, and sing a song about, you know, they're generally Osquelga in Irish. They're about emigration or unrequited love, or they're never, ever, ever about happy things. They're always really sad. They play, they're saying unaccompanied, unaccompanied, and they will expect absolute silence in the pub for at least 10 minutes. But these songs go on. It and may on, seem and like, on. like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not party music. And the cobblestone, the cobblestone is a pub in Smithfield, and it's, it's a great, really good Irish music pub, probably the best in Dublin, if not the country. But the barmen will even stop pulling pints while these songs are going on because they're considered they're just the absolute height of our heritage and who we are and what we do. Not Polly, we sing a Chanel song, he'll be down there making cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're in Irish and they're amazing songs. Even I speak Irish, but the fact that they're written so long ago, I'm well, fluent Irish, but often the, the old men who sing them, generally old men who sing them, uh, come from the Gaelic and, and their Irish is it's so colloquial that you, you're, you're kind of picking out phrases of what it means and it's amazing it's like it is like poetry and the more you hear a song the more little bits of it you kind of pick up but um it you sound go, like you're about to sing if you go, I'm, what I'm going to do is play slow air oh, right. the uh, next best thing the uh, slow air is, you won't hear any slow airs played in pubs either that's why I, I might as well play one because um they're generally very sad and the, the Shano songs often take the melodies from the airs and the, the airs are often written as laments for, for dead people. Or this one is called um, Tom Shet in Machulla, which means I am asleep. It's often played at uh, I'm asleep now and don't wake me is the full title, and it's often played at people's funerals. But uh, the, the melody of the song is borrowed for a lot of Shano uh, songs. It's quite uh, tear jerky and sad, so I'm going to play a real afterwards. 